Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name's Cam Williams, and it's time to go through the rankings for this week, the weekly ranking show. And we didn't have many changes because we didn't have that many big names playing after the US Open. And of course, with the Davis Cup underway, we didn't have any players on the ATP playing for ATP points. But there were some changes outside the top 10, but let's go check out the results from last week. So we only had two tournaments last week, both on the WTA. And Sidia Kova, she defeated Rabakina, the Wimbledon champion, in the Slovenia Open final, 6-7, 7-6, 6-4, to add a singles trophy to the US Open doubles trophy that she won a couple of weeks ago. And at the Chennai Open, we had Fruvatova, the 17-year-old sensation, defeating Lynette in the final, 4-6, 6-3, 6-4 to lift her first WTA trophy. And she's a very promising player, so we expect this to be one of many on the WTA. And both got a boost in the rankings because of their wins. Let's start with the WTA rankings for this week. And like I said, no changes to the top 10. With Fiontech staying on top, Jabur second, Contabate in at three, Bedosa at four, Pagula at five, Zachary at six, Sabalenka at seven, Goff at number eight, Halep at nine, and Garcia at number 10. But a couple of those players are playing in Tokyo next week, so expect maybe some changes to the top 10 this time next week. Having a look at the race of the finals now, and we've got two players qualified with Fiontech and Jabur, and those two are one and two in the qualification race. Pagula comes in at three. She's very close to qualifying. Over the next few weeks, she should get there. Goff comes in at four, Garcia at five, Sabalenka at six, Kazakina at number seven, but Simona Halep, she is out of the race now that she has called it quits on her 2022 season. We won't see her until next year, and she definitely won't be playing the WTA finals, so she is out, which means that Zachary gets to go up into that number eight spot, Kudamatova goes up to nine, and Bedosa gets back in the top ten. And as I said before, a couple of those names are playing next week in Tokyo, so expect some players to change in that top ten, and with Halep gone, that leaves a big opening for somebody else to take her spot. Having a look at the players that have gone up in the rankings this week on the WTA outside the top 10, and it was the two winners of last week. Zinia Kova, she goes up 33 spots to number 49 in the world. And Fruvitova, she goes up 56 spots into number 74 in the world, which is a career high for her. So again, two players that won last week, getting big boosts in the ranks. And the players that have gone down in the rankings this week, we had Ostapenko. She went down four spots to number 19 in the world. And Paolini dropped down 20 spots to number 75 in the world. So a couple of players that maybe had points from this time last year couldn't replicate their results and dropped down the ranks because of it. Having a look at the ATP rankings now and no changes to the top 10 because we had Davis Cup last week, which doesn't count for points. Alcaraz, he's still number one in the world with Rude at number two. Nadal's still at number three, very close behind Rude. So over the next few weeks, we'll see if that changes. With Medvedev coming in at four, Zverev at five, Sitsipas at six, Djokovic at seven, Nori at eight, Rublev at nine, and Hubi Hercatch rounds out the top 10. But a bunch of those players are playing next week and not just for the Labor Cup. So there are players that are playing for points next week. Expect some changes. Having a look at the race of the finals now and with four players qualified, we don't have any changes to the rankings this week. But only four spots left for the A to B finals. Of course, we've got Alcarez. He's still on top of the rankings with Nadal coming in at number two. Rude at number three. Sidney Bass at four, all qualified. Medvedev coming in at five. Now, he is playing next week to add to his total. So we'll see how he does. Rublev comes in at number six. FAA, he comes in at seven. Zverev at eight. We don't know when Zverev's coming back. He said he might not be back for months because of his foot. Herkic comes in at number nine, and Fritz rounds out the top 10. But you gotta remember, Djokovic, if he stays in the top 20 for the ATP Finals race, he will automatically qualify. And currently, he's number 15 in the race. So if he finishes in that top 20 because of winning Wimbledon, he will automatically be in the top qualification. So gotta keep an eye on Djokovic. Having a look outside the top 10 at the players that have gone up in the rankings. And we had Hugo Ombert, who won a challenger event last week when everyone else was playing Davis Cup. He's gone up 29 spots to 110 in the world. And Dominic Team actually lost to Ombert in the final of a challenger event in France, but got a lot of points. Goes up 34 spots to 182 in the world as both of them try and get back into the top 100 by the end of the year. A couple of the players have gone down to the rankings this week. We had James Duckworth. He's gone down 13 spots to number 83 in the world. And Luca Pui, he's down at 315 in the world. And only a few years ago, he was in the top 10. So he's gone down 26 extra spots from last week. So really dropping out of the rankings completely is Luca Pui. And in 2019, actually did really well at the Australian Open. So he's really dropped off the last few years. So there you have it. No major changes to the rankings this week. But we do have some players playing next week. Four points, especially in the ATP with Medvedev coming back. He's playing in Mets next week. And a lot of players playing Labor Cup. Now, Labor Cup's not worth any points. So Djokovic, Nadal, uh, Rude, Sidzi Pass, those guys playing at the Labor Cup, they won't get any points for their wins. 
but it'll just be fun to watch them. And of course, Federer will be playing that event. We'll be covering that next weekend. But let me know down in the comments below. Has anything shocked you about the rankings this week? Is anything surprising uh, with the rankings? Alcarez is actually pretty far on top of the rankings ahead of both Rude and Nadal. So I wonder how long he's going to stay at number one. He could be there for the rest of the year. But let me know down in the comments below. Is there anything that shocked you this week with the rankings?